Before we start this video, I'd like to state a couple of things. This video talks a lot about homophobia and hate. So, if you don't want to see any of that, maybe give this a miss. Number two, I'm speaking from an unbiased point of view. However, please know I do have a side. Obviously, that side is equality. Number three, any person or country I mention or talk about are for the sake of building context, and it is no way an attack on a character or nation. Opinions of these places may be given. However, I am not asking for a call to arms against any party spoken about. Please don't turn this into a witch hunt, and for safety's sake, for anyone we discuss, please, please don't, don't sue us. us. Number four, I'm just one guy. I have a script editor and a friend who helps me comb through data to make sure everything we say is as close to the truth as possible. However, we're liable to make mistakes. If we do make a mistake, there'll be a correction in the comments. So if you spot a mistake, I'm sorry, we didn't mean it. Please don't sue us. And one more time for the people in the back. Please don't sue us. Thank you. And now we'll begin with the scheduled broadcast. There is a word that you hear today, which is a divisive topic. There are many alternative words for this word, and they all mean slightly different things. The word surrounds a group of people who haven't exactly had it easy. There has been a struggle for these people to receive the same rights as others. These people threw literal fucking bricks to send their message. These people are queers. Queer can describe anyone who doesn't conform to the heterosexual cisgender norm most people live with. We're talking gays, lesbians, pansexuals, asexuals, transgender folk, non-binary, the list goes on and on. Queers have always been a thing. There's a podcast called History is Gay. Alan Turing is a legendary queer man who broke the German Enigma code in World War II. Marsha P. Johnson was instrumental in the Stonewall Riots in 1969. What a legend. In modern day, queer people are treated a lot better than they were back then. However, there is still a lot going on. In many countries, for example, Qatar, still punish any deviation from the heterosexual cisgender norm with a lengthy prison sentence and sometimes even death. Don't just take my word for it, we'll be taking Joe Lighter's word for it later on. You might ask yourself, what made me decide to talk about this topic? Well, there is a very good reason for that. I streamed a few weeks ago on Twitch. It was an editing stream for Anon, I am Anon's editor after all, and we got a bit sidetracked. Here, I'll show you. How homophobic are you? What? Oh. My. God. What is this? Oh my god. Chat. I think... We have found a new video, video topic. You can see here, it sparked something in me, which I had to get out. Again, we'll come back to this. But for now, let's delve into this word and discuss the history, the hardships, and the detractors of queer people. people have always been around. Trust me, there's evidence. The earliest evidence of queer existence comes from the ancient Egyptians. Finding this document in our research completely useless because it was in a completely different language. It, it Eventually, it gave us something to understand. Wikipedia! Yay! All of the teachers are cringing right now. They're cringing. I can sense it. Kunup Tepe and Nakut 
Naya Kanuhum. We're gonna call them Knum and Nayan for the sake of easiness because I am not Egyptian. I am English. Knum and Nayan were the first documented case of queer people. The history surrounding them is incredibly complex involving pharaohs and the fifth dynasty of rulers in Egypt, but we're not gonna get bogged down in all of that today. Knum and Nayan were servants to the pharaoh king Nyerisirini? I want to say, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. It is a needlessly complex name, that's all I'm going to say, just call him like, like Steve or something, I don't know, something easy. Anyway, they're believed to be the first recorded queer people in history. Both Thomas Dawson and Greg Reader argue this. The main point of evidence in this theory is the depiction on the tombs where they were buried, where Kanum is in the place of a wife in many pictures and carvings. Other scholars believe that they were just brothers due to having wife and kids. However, both the points of view are argued relentlessly over who is correct. For purposes of this video, I personally, after reading it, I do believe they were queer. I do believe they were homies. They fucked. Look at those eyes, clearly banging. Jokes aside, there are so many examples of queer people throughout history. There is a 23 page Wikipedia document to read about this. Granted, Wikipedia isn't always the most trustworthy source, so let's look at a different source. The English Heritage Site. It documents more queer people in history. And this site isn't in what I can only assume is Egyptian. If you actually know what language it is, please let me know in the comments. It's really pissing me off. Anyway, the site has a wealth of information to offer. Something which caught my eye was Georgina, the Duchess of Devonshire. Her many relationships with women of the time. Mary Graham and Lady Elizabeth Foster were just two of the romantic partners. This woman's a baller and a fucking queer legend. She bo wrote both of these women absolutely saucy love letters, one of which is read out now by good friend of the channel, legendary Fiverr voice actor, C. Beetle, 89, who is a warm man with a warm Scottish accent, which tucks me into bed at night with a loving kiss and a warm glass of milk. Hold on. The services are on hold. What? This is awfully disappointing. Right, it's time for the backup. We have to settle with legendary Natasha from Fiverr. Natasha, take it away. My dear Bess, do you hear the voice of my heart crying to you? Do you feel what it is for me to be separated from you? Oh, Bess, every sensation I feel that heightens my adoration of you. Beautiful way, Natasha. Top, top notch. I'm not even being sarcastic. If you genuinely need voice work, don't go to Natasha. Link down below. She's really good. And the turnaround was brilliant. Next on the queer history syllabus, we have Sappho. Sappho was an ancient poet who really had a lot going on. The term lesbian is attributed to her. Talk about an icon. She was a poet and a musician, and one poem, Ode to Aphrodite, stuck out to me with its queer themes. Sappho talks about desiring Aphrodite, the ancient Greek goddess of sexual love and beauty. The poem is only done justice from being read. However, having just blown the budget on getting Natasha to read a letter extract, I had to get Pancake to do it instead, mostly to repay the favour he owes me for not ratting him out to the police. He knows what he did. So Pancake, take it away, I guess. Deathless Aphrodite, throned in flowers, daughter of Zeus, O oh, terrible enchantress, with this sorrow, with this anguish, break my spirit, lady, not longer. Hear anew the voice, O oh, hear and listen. Come, as in that island, dawn, thou camest, billowing in thy yoked car to Sappho, forth from thy fathers. Golden house in pity, I remember. Fleet and fair, thy sparrows drew thee beating. Fast their wings above the dusky harvests, down the pale heavens. Lightning anon, thou, O blessed and brightest, smiling with immortal eyelids, asked me, Maiden, what betideth thee, or wherefore callest upon me? What is here, the longing more than other, here in this mad heart? And who the lovely one, beloved that wouldst lure to loving, Sappho, who wrongs thee? See. If now she flies, she soon must follow, 
Yes, if spurning gifts she soon must offer, Yes, if loving not she soon must love thee, How so unwilling! Come again to me, O oh, now release me, End the great pang, and all my heart desireth, Now a fulfillment, fulfill, O oh, Aphrodite, fight by my shoulder. Now, I'm no expert, but the romantic tension between Sappho and Aphrodite is electrifying! Also, thank you, Pancake. I am recording this ahead of time, so I have no clue whether you did a good job or not, but here's a gold star! You did well, buddy. Proudy. Anyway, back to Sappho. Being attributed to the weird lesbian, she lived on the island of Lesbo, which is self-explanatory. My editor said dogs, dogs would 100% want to live on Lesbo with Sappho, and I would love to be the best square at the wedding. Queer people are everywhere in history once you start looking. Hell, Florence Nightingale was rumoured to be an asexual legend in a piece written by Making Queer History. Asexuality, often an unrepresented area of the LGBTQ plus community, was first mentioned by Carl Maria Kurtbeni. I hope I'm saying that right. At this point, it was referred to as monosexuality. Mono being one. You only love yourself. I, I love that. Self-care. All the way. Let's go. I do quite enjoy the term, the monosexual, because it almost sounds like a threat. I would be ever so slightly terrified if someone comes to me, I am monosexual. Bring me a bucket of cream. <laughs> Maybe not the cream, but I just have a thing for Markiplier's voice. It's me, Markiplier. I'm from Wish.com. I uh, <laughs> can't say that, I'll get sued. Moving forward to the 18th century again, Gemma Wilkinson was a non-binary individual who started up a non-binary group full of weed non-binary legends who supported women's rights and opposed slavery. They are the original queer anti-heroes, spitting in the face of the backwards law and the establishment at all times, whilst doing their own thing like a bunch of fucking champions. Finally, on our list, of legends making this video because there's a lot of legends we want to cover but we don't have time so we're gonna have to make another video on that shit <laughs> anyway her name is lucy hicks anderson lucy was a pioneer of trans rights she was born male but transitioned into a legend as well as a woman she was a badass chef who had two husbands the first one only lasted nine years and it's not the focus here the second marriage is where her story becomes something to discuss before her second marriage, she bought a boarding house, which was a front, of course, for a brothel, which is a legend. And, you know, she also sold booze from this brothel during Prohibition to two booze-hungry Americans, which is, you know, just brilliant. Jesus Christ, she's an amazing reputation. Supporting sex work, divorcing men she doesn't want to be with, giving the finger to the US government. Is there anything she can't do? Well, you know? No. Obviously. She married her second husband in 1944, just a year later. And then the trouble began. A pesky sailor caught an STD from someone at the brothel, meaning all of the brothel workers and Lucy had to undergo tests to ensure they were clear. When a stuffy lawyer found out she'd been assigned the male gender at birth, they tried and sentenced her for perjury. Like a bunch of wankers. But Lucy did fire back throughout the trial with this amazing line. I defy any doctor in the world to prove that I am not a woman. I have lived, dressed, acted just what I am. A woman. After that, she did serve a jail time, but she moved to LA with her husband. And they lived a happy life until her death at 68. What a... Fucking legend! Lucy Hicks Anderson, I salute you! Even now in our modern day, queers are creating things we all know and love. Russell T Davies, Doctor Who showrunner and creator of many amazing shows, is gay and also a fucking legend. He fucks with Tories. As long as he cre creates more good Doctor Who, he'll always be a legend. Tom Daly is a diver and Tom Talent is a comedian and they both excel in their fields and make sure we all have a laugh. Or, you know, go, shit, he jumped high. Jesus. Eddie Izzard, the comedian, a gender-fluid legend who is honestly fucking hilarious. And Yasmin Finley has made history as the first trans companion to ride in the TARDIS. 
If you couldn't tell by now, by the way, I'm really excited for New Who. Bring it on! Can't wait for David Tennant. Love him. He's great. Let's move on to our next lesson, though. Because, you know, this lesson's over now. Get out of my classroom. You've got queer science next. Get to it, you fucking cunts. God! God, get out! I'm something of a scientist myself, and I do believe there is a scientific basis for everything. However, for matters like this, I am woefully underqualified, so to get a better scope and understanding, I decided to read through several papers. The first thing I read was The Gay Science, by famed angry man who doesn't see the point in anything anymore, Frederick Nietzsche's. It took me all of five minutes to realise that this isn't actually about the science behind sexuality and gender, just a regular book, just a Nietzsche's book. He's just, he's just an angry man, isn't he? So, having a nihilistic breakdown afterwards, which is something that is required after consuming anything by Nietzsche's. Come on, class, you should know this by now. We got reading. I would put a reading montage in here, but it'd be dreadfully boring. So instead, let's do science justice today and talk about the findings in a matter that would put the majority of my heroes rolling in their graves. Apart from Bill Nye. I fucking love Bill Nye. I found multiple papers for our lesson today. The first paper is entitled Genetic and Environmental Influences on Female Sexual Orientation, Childhood Gender Typicality, and Adult Gender Identity. Yes, I know it's a long name, but that's just how we name things. Shut up. Penned in 2011 by Andrea Briou, who has stated she has no conflicting interests unlike some. This study takes a large sample of female twins born in the UK and asks them to fill out a questionnaire on their childhood gender typicality, which is the gender they typically associated with as a child, and their adult gender identity, how they identify now they are an adult. This paper is long. I was reading this in bed on my side at 2am, knowing I had to get up at 6am for work at 8. Considering the pain I went through, we're going to give you the cliff notes today, guys. Side note, does anyone else remember the cliff notes video about Macbeth? That shit, it genuinely still keeps me up at night. Fair and foul and foul is fair. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy my or Don't, I'm not your dad. To get our cliff notes, we looked at the abstract. The abstract of a scientific paper is the background me methodology and the conclusion, written in a condensed manner. The background of the paper is as follows, spoken by a text-to-speech voice, because again, we have no budget. Human sexual orientation is influenced by genetic and non-shared environmental factors as are two important psychological correlates, childhood gender typicality CGT, and adult gender identity AGI. However, researchers have been unable to resolve the genetic and non-genetic. What's said here is not as complex as it seems. Let's break it down. The human sexuality, being who someone is attracted to, obviously, is a mixture of genetics and environmental factors that can be broken down into childhood gender typicality and adult gender identity. We've previously discussed the definitions of this. I'm not going to repeat myself. You better be taking notes. Researchers have been able to find the balance, so to speak, of the two to fully understand how they can affect the person and shape them into who they are, both in gender identity as well as sexual identity. This paper takes the question on. Now, let's look at the methodology or how they perform the study and what methods they use to collect data. Again, text to speech. Again, no budget. Here we performed a multivariate genetic analysis in a large sample of British female twins N equals 4,426, who completed a questionnaire assessing sexual attraction, CGT and AGI. Univariate genetic models indicated modest genetic influences on sexual attraction, 25%, AGI, 11%, and CGT, 31%. For the multivariate analyses, a common pathway model best fitted the data. Right, now let's break this down again. The researchers performed a multivariate genetic analysis, big word I know, in a large sample of British female twins. This is basically telling us they examined a set of genes from 4,426 women. That's what the N stands for. All of these women are from Britain and they're all twins. These 4,426 women answered a questionnaire surrounding their sexuality, as well as their childhood gender typicality and their adult gender identity. The study found a modest genetic influence on all mentioned areas and found a common pathway model best fitted to the data they found. Now, let's look at the conclusion. 
spoken by a lovely voice. That's still text-to-speech. How many times do I have to tell? This indicated that a single latent variable influenced by a genetic component and common non-shared environmental component explained the association between the three traits but there was substantial measurement error. These findings highlight common developmental factors affecting differences in sexual orientation. Now, I am not going to explain this whole fucking paragraph. You've seen my other videos. I'm sure you have a basic understanding of scientific lingo now. I want to make an album called Scientific Lingo. Anyone play instruments want to join me in making an album called Scientific Lingo? Anyway, let's do what Joe Rogan does and skip to the point that is most useful to us. For our example, it's the final line. These findings highlight a common developmental factor affecting the differences in sexual orientation. This line indicates the study proves that a number of different developmental factors influence the way queer people's brains develop. It's not just a choice. It's not unnatural. It's not a ghost. Woo! It's not like that, as is often supposed by the alt-right anti-queer organizations. Speaking of which, we should discuss a negative piece because we could discuss positive queer science all day. However, that wouldn't be really fair and balanced now, would it? So, Let's look at a piece against queer people to ensure that we are fair and balanced and also to take the piss out of the claims, maybe. This paper falls into more pseudoscience and political science in the UK. So, we're going to give you a wee bit of background. That This is where the don't sue us thing begins to really, really ring true. The ruling party in the UK is the Conservative Party, right now in 2022, and is ran by Boris Johnson. Wait, no, Liz Tru- Hold on, no, it's Rishi Sunak now. God, they fucking change on a dime, don't they? Anyway, they've been running the country since 2010, and in my opinion, been doing a rather shit job of it. One rather large thing they did do in the early days, thanks to resident friend of the pigs, David Cameron, is legalise gay marriage. Which is a shock, because up until this point, the Conservative Party haven't exactly been seen as queer allies. Margaret Thatcher, a famous Conservative tosspot and inventor of the soft serve ice cream, Mr Whippy. If you enjoy Mr Whippy, just know you're enjoying the devil's ice cream! She's dead! Margaret Thatcher introduced Section 28. Section 28 was a rather cruel law banning the promotion of homosexuality. This was a rather political way of prohibiting groups supporting queer people, often leaving the groups to disband and leaving a lot of queer people between 1988 and 2003 with very little help. It was also supported by the Salvation Army, a prominent charity in the UK and the US who have an incredibly checkered history when it comes to queer people. Mostly because it's run by some very nice religious nut jobs, but I'm only joking, they could sue me out of existence. As you can see, the Conservative Party haven't exactly had a very good track record with the queer community. So imagine my shock in 2013 when Cameron managed to pass the same sex marriage bill. He did this by relying on cross party support, of all things as the large majority of the Tory party didn't want to pass the bill, whereas Labour and the Lib Dems were fine with my wife and her best friend getting together for a few rounds of whatever they do when they're alone. To me, it sounds like tennis. Cameron didn't do this for his own self-interest. He clearly wasn't banging George Osborne. He was banging pigs. He did this for the sake of the party. Cameron himself was a veteran. He was a historical backer of Section 28. He backed it in 1997 when standing for MP. Some say they believe that his move to legalise was completely genuine. I don't buy it. He did this whilst half the party still believed queer people to be less than human. I believe it all comes down to a question of evolution. Cameron was clearly a clever man outside of popping his penis in pigs. There was definitely a method to his madness. You could see the writing on the wall that queer people couldn't just be hidden under the rug like a dirty little secret. He also saw throughout the 2000s Labour's more positive stance on queer folk. I believe his move to legalise was one of political chess. He wanted to be the first of the punch to get it through the government. It wasn't like Labour and the Lib Dems, both of whom had a positive stance on the community, would vote it down just because the Tories put it up. It makes more sense to me that he did this move as a political one and a political one alone. If you don't believe me, then let me try and convince you with this. 
During the Tony Blair administration, he called the LGBTQ plus a fringe agenda and accused Tony Blair of moving heaven and earth to allow the promotion of homosexuality in schools. I'm not done yet. After the bill passed, he kept two cabinet ministers who voted against it. Owen Patterson and David Jones. No, I'm still not done. In 2015, after winning the election, he appointed two new ministers who opposed the bill in the fucking equality office of all places. Now you tell me. He was totally, really in favour of it. When it comes down to it, politics is a fine blend of strategy bullshit and scientific data analysis just to work out what policy will keep the masses happy. And for David, this was his jackpot. Now we're going to turn to the US, and more importantly, the elephant in the room, the gay gene. The gay gene is a theory that inside of every homosexual, there is a special gene that determines whether someone is queer or not. Very silly to say out loud, but it was a genuine theory which was tried and tested for many years. We had the belief that it's all down to one strand of DNA for a very long time, and that belief is very wrong. Speaking of DNA, by the way, did you know that the man who discovered DNA, James Watson, is incredibly racist, believing that white people are intellectually superior to people of colour? What the fuck? And all I have to say to disprove this is Neil deGrasse Tyson. And then I can walk away, leaving this 90 year old racist dipshit eating his jelly and ice cream in his care home. On top of that, Watson used Rosalind Franklin's work photographing a double helix DNA structure using X-ray crystallography. I hope I'm saying that right. Without her consent. Then won a Nobel Prize, and then Rosalind didn't even get credit because the poor lover died. What an asshole. Oh. Back on topic, the American Public Broadcasting Service, or PBS for short, have a dedicated website about the gay gene and gay people in general, even including a homophobia quiz which we did on stream. Gay people make me nervous? Well... This question is designed to measure your thoughts and feelings and behaviours with regards to homosexuality. It does not test no right or wrong answers. Interesting. Gay people make me nervous. Strongly disagree. Change your answer to. Gay people deserve what they get. Yeah, no, I changed it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You said strongly agree, don't worry. Th this is so backwards. One should be so strongly disagree. Uh, I think homosexual people should not work with children. As a homosexual man who has worked with kids in the past, it doesn't change a thing. I make. Oh, goodness me. I make derogatory remarks like faggot or queer to people I suspect are gay. What the fuck? No. I would hit a homosexual. No. Homosexuality should not be against the law. It should. It should be legal. I avoid gay individuals. It bothers me to see. Oh my. What is this quiz? When I see a gay person, I think, what a waste. No! Fuck that, just be happy for crying out loud. What? Apparently, I'm not allowed to see if I'm homophobic on it. The page is called Assault on Gay America. Firstly, small suggestion. A little suggestion for you. Perhaps don't call your website discussing queer people Assault on Gay America. It sounds ever so slightly like a threat. Secondly, the website runs like fucking dog shit. So if you want to read anything on this website yourself, be prepared for some early 2000s web design. That was my toes. The website has a section on the gay gene entitled The Gay Gene Debate, which admittedly is a lot nicer and to the point compared to Assault on Gay America. So, They've, they've scraped it back a bit. The website gives us the following statement on the on why the gay gene should exist in humans. The search for a possible genetic basis of homosexuality was not a new thing 
in 1993. Other researchers have isolated the gene in fruit flies, but fruit flies are not human beings, and Dean Hammer, along with brain researcher Simon LeVay, and a handful of other scientists focusing on biological and genetic causes of homosexuality, were making the leap from laboratory animals to people. Because of the perceived social, political, and cultural implications of the research, the relatively minor advance in scientific knowledge put forward by Hammer and LeVay in the early 1990s attracted extraordinary global attention. Firstly, I get it. The early 90s. They were big into turtles and going to get pizza. But because the gene exists in fruit flies, it doesn't mean it exists in human beings. Fruit flies have a genetics which allow them to grow wings and fly. But it doesn't mean if I jump off my flat, I'm gonna sprout wings. That's not how genetic makeup works. Genetic makeup is complex, and it takes a lot of digging just to unearth it, due to its fucking sheer complexity. You can't just decide because it happens in one animal, it must exist here. That'd be like me deciding because dogs are genetically born to be fast on all fours, for me to run around my street like a madman on all fours and get sectioned under the Mental Health Act, because if dogs have the genes, so must I. Oh no! God, it's fucking frustrating. Oh, I need to calm down. While I calm down, here is Anon explaining the fucking Ninja Turtles. I don't fucking care. Ah, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now that takes me back. Oh, the blue one. What was his name? Leonardo. Oh, what a righteous dude. Absolutely amazing skills with the double katana. Double two. Dos. That that's a lot. You need you need a high dexterity skill to dual wield. If SAO told me anything, it was that. And Donny, Donny, the little purple dude with his stick. Holy shit! That man wields a stick like Shadow wields his. Ah, <laughs> uh, what a righteous dude again. Smart too. He got he got them brains. He got them brains. Who is the other one? Oh, Mikey! Oh, what a cool dude! He could skateboard. He had sticks with chains on them. He had a stick, then a chain, then another stick, and he used to fucking swing them around like they were no one's business. That shit's wild! Kicking ass left and right. The fucking. Shit, what were they called? Purple dragons. Oh. Fucking hell, that takes me back. And then Raph. Raphael. The little red angry dude who used to just fucking be angry. That was basically his character trait. Um, I always forget the name of the, the things he used. They're like little forks. Um, I don't know. Are they like, are they called Kai or something? Kai comes to mind, but I, I'm almost set and that's incorrect. Um, you can, you can fucking cancel me uh, in the comments. Go nuts. Fuck yourself. The UK is a country where queer people are said to have equal rights alongside cis people. The opinion amongst regular people in the population is that queer people exist, and that's mostly okay. But how does this opinion hold up? Well, it's easy to answer, isn't it? Of course. It's statistics time. You come into the lesson, it's time for a test. What does this statistic mean? Wrong! Minus five points! These statistics are taken from multiple places, so bear with me. Let's start with the governmental statistics. These stats the government released are shown on Microsoft Excel, which, believe it or not, is the same system that our government used to log COVID infections during a fucking pandemic. I'm not kidding you. Are you surprised? Because I'm fucking not. First things first, the colour coordination on this table shows how accurate these measurements are. Take note that only straight people or heterosexual people are the, have the most accurate readings. Hmm. Then we have the bit 3.1% of people who identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Which is apparently up from previous measurements. We have notes commenting on the data on a separate PDF. One comment stuck out like a wee bit of a sore thumb to me, and it's this. People aged between 16 and 24 years old continue to be the most likely to identify as LGB in 2020. Reflecting an increasing trend for this age group since 2014. This breaks down as 27% identifying as gay or lesbian and 5.3 identifying as bisexual. This comment was seeming like a run-of-the-mill comment on data got a little bit under my skin. It refers to an increase as a trend, which is something often used to comment on the opinion that people are coming out as queer to follow the trend. Firstly, before you type out that angry comment about scientific language, 
yeah. I'm aware that when discussing common data with a noticeable increase or decrease over time that you can consider it an, a trend in the data. I get it. I'm a scientist. I understand, baby. Yeehaw. I don't know where the yeehaw come from. I've lost my place in the script now, fuck. However, when I first read this, it seemed to me almost as if it was implying that there was a rise in, was a trend for younger queer folk who were coming out as a, a trend. I may be wrong, but I am a cynical asshole, and I wouldn't trust this government or its civil servants as far as I could throw them. You may notice that there are no statistics for trans folk in this data set. That's because there aren't any. We have to look elsewhere for that. Firstly, we tried the Office of National Statistics, which had this to say. Thank you for your query regarding transgender people in the UK. ONS does not produce estimates for the number of transgender people living in the UK. ONS published a position paper in 2009. This remains the current position of the ONS. For an office based entirely on providing population statistics, you're really not doing a good job, are you? For our answer, we then turn to Stonewall, a legendary charity who were a lot more helpful, surprising no one. Viewing their statistics was not only visually pleasing, but it was more helpful than the government could ever be. Are you surprised yet? I'm fucking not. They locked me in my house for a hundred days. Are you fucking kidding me? We find out that in Canada, the land of maple syrup and other harmful stereotypes about Canada, it was recorded that they have a value of 0.33% of their population as trans or non-binary. The UK survey counted 1% of people as trans male, 1% of people as non-binary, a further 1% of people as genderqueer, and both trans women and agender came to a value less than 1%. Now that we have an idea of the number of queer folk in the UK, let's start asking questions. The first and main question that come to my brain was, how safe do LGBTQ plus folk feel in our country? For this question, again, we turn to Stonewall, who have provided many things for us, and have proven to me, and probably to you, that they should run the country, because they'd be a lot less useless than the fucking Tory party. Now, before we discuss these statistics, some of them aren't particularly pretty to look at, or listen to. So if you don't want to, maybe skip ahead a bit. I wouldn't judge you. Because even as a, a mythical square from the seventh dimension, it was tough read. 21% of LGBT folk have experienced hate crime due to their sexual orientation or identity during a 12 month period. 41% of trans people have experienced a hate crime or an incident because of their gender identity in a 12 month period. The number of lesbian, gay, and bisexual people who have experienced a hate crime or incident in the same 12-month period because of their sexuality have risen by 78% from 9% in 2013. Four out of five people who have experienced a hate crime or incident did not report it to the police. There is no joke here. There's no witty one-liner about the topic. It's just statistics. They're not nice. To pull back the mask. They're fucking terrifying. I've never been particularly secret online about my sexual orientation. I happily make jokes about it every day. I'm a fucking gay man. Come on. Are you really surprised? Because I'm not. Reading this paper, it was hard because I know people who have been in instance where they're targeted for their identity or sexual preference. I've seen it on the news, both local and national, where LGBTQ plus folk have been harassed, bullied, assaulted, or even fucking killed because of who they are. There is nothing deeper here than just the truth. No sugar-coated pill for this data to be hidden in. There's no nice way to talk about this stuff. But if everything had to be nice to be discussed, we wouldn't get anywhere, would we? On screen now is a list of charities both LGBTQ plus orientated and those of which that concern themselves with mental health awareness. Please, get into contact with them if you need to. This section is over now. Class dismissed. I don't think I can 
need to say any more, as the stats have said everything I could on the topic and more. Welcome to Economics. Come and sit down. Today we're going to learn about money. Do you like money, Timothy? I like money. I have a money pool like Scrooge McDuck, but it turns out money pools aren't a liquid. <coughs> They're a solid, and it hurts, Timothy. My voice has gotten deeper, Timothy, because I'm drowning in the money, Timothy. <clears throat> anyway, money makes the world go round, as the old saying goes. And there is a man in this world who really does not need any more money. This is David Beckham, former footballer and current money whore for any perfume, company, magazine, or homophobic transphobic post of World Cup. Dave here took out a 10 million pound deal with Qatar to sponsor the World Cup, something which a certain Joe Lysett had a problem with. We'll let him explain in his own words. This is a message to David Beckham. I consider you, along with Kim Woodburn and Monty Don, to be a gay icon. You were the first premiership footballer to do shoots with gay magazines like Attitude, to speak openly about your gay fans, and you married a Spice Girl, which is the gayest thing a human being can do. But now it's 2022, and you've signed a reported £10 million deal with Qatar to be their ambassador during the FIFA World Cup. Qatar was voted as one of the worst places in the world to be gay. Homosexuality is illegal, punishable by imprisonment, and if you're Muslim, possibly even death. You've always talked about the power of football as a force for good, which suggests to me that you've never seen West Brom. But generally, I agree. So with that in mind, I'm giving you a choice. If you end your relationship with Qatar, I'll donate this 10 grand of my own money, that's a grand for every million you're reportedly getting, to charities that support queer people in football. However, if you do not, at midday next Sunday, I will throw this money into a shredder just before the opening ceremony of the World Cup and stream it live on a website I've registered called benderslikebeckham.com. Not just the money, but also your status as a gay icon will be shredded. You'll be forcing me to commit a crime. Although even then, I reckon I'll get off more likely than I would if I got caught whacking off a lad in Doha. The choice is yours. I look forward to hearing from you. Lysit was serious about this too. After waiting for a response that never came, he streamed himself live, dumping 10 grand into a shredder, wearing a lovely and rather loud rainbow jacket. People on Twitter had a lot to say about this, most of which was rather funny, to me at least. Adam Brooks, famous GB News wanker, called the move distasteful. This comment coming from the man who worked for the company, who fired two staff members for taking the knee during a debate on the BLM movement in football. Honeyboy Mark, who runs a rather pleasant gardening Twitter, called the move a disgrace and confirmed he will be switching off the channel whenever Joe Lysett comes on from this day forth. Look what you've done, Joe. You've angered Mark. The Roses will suffer for this. One person even decided to throw Rosa Parks into the mix. I wish I was fucking lying to you. All of these comments and many more we're just adding fuel to the fire of what is potentially the greatest publicity stunt of all time. And Lysett released one final video revealing the truth. This is my final message to David Beckham. It's me, that prick who shredded loads of money in a cost of living crisis. So, where were we? I told you I was going to destroy £10,000 if you didn't end your relationship with Qatar before the first day of the World Cup. And then, when you didn't end your relationship, or even respond in any way, I streamed myself dropping 10k into a shredder. Or did I? I haven't quite told you the whole truth. Because the truth is, the money that went into the shredder was real, but the money that came out was fake. I would never destroy real money. I would never be so irresponsible. 
In fact, the 10 grand had already been donated to LGBTQ plus charities before I even pressed send on the initial tweet last week. I never expected to hear from you. It was an empty threat designed to get people talking. In many ways, it was like your deal with Qatar, David. Total bullshit from the start. I'm not even queer. Only joking. There is one thing I'll shred. This is your Attitude magazine cover from June 2002. The first ever cover of a gay magazine with a Premier League footballer on it. I asked Attitude if I could shred it, and they were more than happy to oblige. Gosh, it's all been quite a lot, this, hasn't it? Right, I'm off down the gay village to have a few pints. This is brilliant. Not only because it brings the homophobes, the haters, and the punters all out and shouting, it also puts this issue on full display. I'm very lucky. I was born and raised in the UK. I came of age during the revoking of Section 28 and the legalization of gay marriage. But the UK doesn't represent the world. There are places in this world where being queer isn't only not accepted, it's illegal. Countries like Qatar, where people can be imprisoned and even fucking killed for being queer. And not just in Qatar, around the world. What Lights It did was not only to shine a light on the fact, it got people talking, and in the long run, hopefully it'll make a difference. Now let's look at something not in the UK, something which we found on stream which started my descent into queerness. Right, so the Westboro Baptist Church. There is no sugarcoating in this one, is there? Especially with a website name like God Hates Fags. Oh, God. I think we're just gonna have to go through this like any other section and not mention the fact that everyone involved in this website is an absolute scumbag who all deserve a punch in the face, followed by a drag queen, a trans person, and a mythical square turning up and beating the living shit out of them. We're not gonna mention that. Nope, not at all. We're going to keep it professional, nice, and unbiased. Before that, however, here are people I drafted in telling Westboro Church to fuck off. Westboro Church to fuck off. Westboro Baptist Church, if I pronounce that right. I'll, I'll say this as politely as I'm able to. Fuck off. I'd say go to hell, but I'm not even sure if Satan would accept you at this point. Do us a favour. Fuck off. The Westboro Baptist Church can fuck off. Hello Westboro Baptist Church. I think you need to shove it up your arse. And I think you're full of shit. I think you're being very close-minded. Excuse the language. But I've, you, you've rustled me the wrong fucking way. And I just... I just don't think that's very cash money now, is it? I think you need to move forward with the times. I think you need to open those tiny minds of yours. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't God say to love thy neighbour? And isn't the Bible basically just a gay fanfic anyway? I don't know, man. I'm just a fucking bug. I'm just... I'm just a critter collecting leaf litter. So, I don't know. Take of this what you will, but I think you need to stop being a bit of a cunt. Ta-ta! Hello, it's two in the morning, I thought I'd join in on the bandwagon. Um, what's for about just church? Fuck off! Ha, <laughs> silly cunts. Oh. I'm gonna firebomb your house. What the fuck? Thank you everyone who helped me get that out of my system. All of their links are down below. Show them some love, they're legends. Genuinely. So, the Westboro Baptist Church is an unaffiliated church in Kansas, USA. The church has a lot of strings to its bow of hate, including homophobia, anti-Semitism, racism, and Islamophobia. Bingo! You get 
fucking nothing. The place is a neo-Nazi's wet dream. However, we're focusing on queer people today. We'll do another video eventually. God, I'm giving myself a lot of work this video, aren't I? Diving into the church as a whole. So, again, give you the cliff notes. Are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four. The church was founded by Red Phelps and has the motto, what the fuck am I doing? It's me, Kermit the Frog. The church has, f the church was founded by Fred Phelps as the motto, repent or perish. Very scary for Kermit the Frog. They have been, they have been to the Supreme Court because they disputed disrupted the funeral of a marine and they lost hard to the tune of nearly three million dollars <laughs> they're said to have at least 60 members of the church and they run a website called godhatesfacts.com come the frog bang cliff notes done i blacked out there don't know what happened anyway <laughs> now to discuss this bully we streamed our adventure into this awful website on Twitch. A move which in hindsight probably should have gotten us banned, but I believe I've spoken enough, especially from this script, considering this script is currently the longest script we've ever done, and the video itself is definitely the longest on the channel. So, enjoy me and whoever I dragged into this looking and laughing at the homophobic arsewipes that are the Westboro Baptist Church. The plan is, we are going to look at the Westboro Baptist Church. And it's gonna work kind of like if you've ever seen any of Ludwig's Mogul Mail. I have a few tabs, we're gonna go through them, and we're just gonna have a bit of a laugh. The Westboro Baptist Church is a small American unaffiliated church. I'm not tuned in properly yet, by the way. I won't be a sec. Medic medicating my dog. I hope your dog's okay. Basically, Westboro Baptist Church is very, very big on anti-gay sentiment. They're also very against atheists, Jews, Muslims, so on and so on and so on and so on. Is known for anti-homosexual rhetoric. The Anti-Defamation League describes it as very homophobic, saying anti-homosexual rhetoric is often a cover for anti-Semitism, anti-Americanism, racism and hatred of other Christian groups. The Southern Poverty Law Center added the WBC to a list of groups. What the f hate groups for homophobia? I am struggling tonight, chat. The group also expresses transphobic messages in its protests. Its homophobic outlook leads to its members to protest LGBT pride events, funerals of those who've died of HIV and AIDS, as well as blame homosexuals for 9/11. That last sentence, hmm, <laughs> blaming the gays for 9-11. Good. And right under that, it talks about the Nazis. Fuck. Um, this is going to be the last stream I ever do, isn't it? I'm going to get fucking banned. This is their website. Notice the URL. As you can see here, it's a lot of shite. No peace for the wicked, fear God, repent or perish, fuck off. They've got public preaching, they have a schedule for this shit. T-Mobile Center, come on. What the fuck? Like, I get they're a, a little bit nuts, but this seems a bit... Oh my god, look at some of those. Oh, good. So we've got some banners here, let's have a look. It's because the TNT Mobile stands for trans. <laughs> so one of the banners here says fags doom and then another word. Marriage one man, one woman for life. Definitely says that in the Bible. Christians caused tranny sin. Jesus. Divorce, remarriage and same-sex marriage are all, I'm going to say sin. God hardens your hearts. Jesus fucking Christ. They're genuinely a little bit nuts, aren't they? Let's, let's read one of their, their news publications. 
sign of the times. It's actually gonna load. Jesus, this is poorly optimized. Um, oh, I've done it again. Sign of the times, shining by the light on current event. The Lord has wrote. Just use proper words for Christ's sakes. Many blessed judgments in the world this week, which can be seen plainly by anyone who's been given the eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand the gracious hand of God. Oh no. Let's view some of the week's judgments from a proper perspective. Oh god, here we go. Major I, I idolatry? Idolatry? Idolatry. We'll say adultery. Idolatry. It was a theme around the world this past week. Here are some highlights. My television is turning off. The FIFA World Cup continued this week, a major idol festival for the world over. Everything from worshipping a man to worshipping the sin of sodomy. So much proud sin. The idolatry season known as Christmas kicked off in a major way. Black Friday sales in the US were a record $9.12 billion and the Christmas tree idol was stood in many stu was stood up in Rockefeller Center in NYC. There was an annual Lopery Monkey Festival in Taiwan where people held a banquet every a thousand years for the long tailed macrees. There's a lovely monkey. What? Question mark, question mark. What chat? If God hate the gays, why do you make him so hot? I'd love to have a talk with me and you both. December 1st, President Joe Biden held his first state dinner in the White House, where French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife were honoured guests. It was a ceremony of great pomp and circumstance. Great pomp, chat. Great pomp. With so many celebrities attending. No soberness, no fear of God, only proud si Sorry, let me just, like... Like, say, for example, I'm having mac and cheese for my dinner. And... God be like, whilst you're eating that mac and cheese, you should be shaking in fear of me. I, I couldn't bring myself to do that. This is just tosh, isn't it? Let's be honest. Although you'll find that that is a theme for the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, a lot of the rhetoric is tosh. Last but not least, the US Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act to protect same-sex marriage, a major idol to the sin of sodomy and willing rebellion against God's commandments on marriage. Lamentation, mourning, and woe unto America. What the fuck? Oh, there's got two Bible par paragraphs and Re repent or perish. Remember that shout, repent or perish. Are you repenting? Because I'm fucking sure as shit, man. Right, so we've seen a little bit about them now. Let's move on. To this, the Westboro Baptist Church is arguably the most obnoxious and rabid hate group in America. It's an extremist group. I'd rather perish, TBH, me too. Um, yeah, there's a lot of articles. Phil Fred Phelps is a well, he's the activist who started it. He died in 2014. Phelps and his followers have been crisscrossed the country to picket the funerals of AIDS victims and engage in other similar protests. But it is his group's picketing of the funeral of soldiers killed in Iraq to tell the world, as Phelps argues, that their deaths are God's punishments for America's fag enabling ways. Jesus Christ has inspired an almost universal revulsion and contempt. Let's see, in his, in his own words, he says, America is doomed for its acceptance of homosexuality if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for going after fornication and homosexuality, then why wouldn't God destroy America for the same thing? He's basically just a nutter, isn't he? He searched into this and I found this video, which we're going to watch together. Um, I grew up in... Jesus, it's loud. Ah. I grew up in the Westboro Baptist Church. Here's why I left. 
and it's from a Phelps. So I'm intrigued, chat. I was a blue eyed, chubby cheeked five year old when I joined my family on the picket line for the first time. My mom made me leave my dolls in the minivan. I'd stand on a street corner in the heavy Kansas humidity, surrounded by a few dozen relatives, with my tiny fist clutching a sign that I couldn't read yet. Gays are worthy of death. Right. Few things here. Number one, right as paradise for an introduction. Well done. But also, Jesus Christ, they gave a five-year-old a sign that said gays deserve death. Oh my God. And as a member of Westboro Baptist Church, I became a fixture on picket lines. Oh my God. The end of my anti-gay picketing career and life as I knew it came 20 years later. Triggered in part by strangers on Twitter. Wait, 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 wait. Firstly, she stayed until she was 25. Are you fucking me? 25. And the only reason she left was Twitter. Oh my god. Is she dumb? I suppose there's an argument to be made here about how cults can sort of warp someone's brain, brainwash them into believing what's being told to them as gospel as truth, but Jesus. Basically it's a cult and brainwashing. Yeah, it is, exactly. But it's fucking creepy to think that like she was more than happy just to be involved in that. Like I get the brainwashing that cults can do and how you can be under the form. Jesus, that's scary. This was the only way for me to do good in a world that sits in Satan's lap. And like the rest of my ten siblings, I believed what I was taught with all my heart, and I pursued Westboro's agenda with a special sort of zeal. In 2009, that zeal brought me to Twitter. Initially, the people I encountered on the platform were just as hostile as I expected. They were the digital version of the screaming horse I've been seeing at protests since I was a kid. I know this is a serious video, but just describing Twitter as a screaming horde, that seems a bit perfect to me. Just a, just a note. But in the midst of that digital brawl, a strange pattern developed. Someone would arrive at my profile with their usual rage and scorn. I would respond with a custom mix of Bible verses, pop culture references, and smiling faces. So what, like, a man should not sleep with a man? You know, Neo from The Matrix? <laughs> He's going to hell. <laughs> you know, Popeye? Hell. You know, Daniel Day-Lewis? Hell. You know, Markiplier? Hell. He fucks man. He going to hell. <laughs> I don't. What pop culture references could you possibly be using? Like. What? Like. Yo, as Sonic would say, chili dogs, not in my ass. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a man of God. No. Fuck off. Hell is a nice place full of nice, normal people. Like if heaven is filled with those. Then fuck that. I don't think heaven's real. I don't think hell's real either, though. So I'd be, I'd be then for the worst nightmare, then I suppose. They would be understandably confused and caught off guard. But then a conversation would ensue, and it was civil, full of genuine curiosity on both sides. How had the other come to such outrageous conclusions about the world? Sometimes the conversation even bled into real life. People I'd sparred with on Twitter would come out to the picket line uh, to see me when I protested in their city. A man named David was one such person. He ran a blog called Julicious. And after several months of heat. Julicious. Ho! Oh, that's a good name. Yeah, I don't think they're real either, but I also believe that there's something after death. Like, surely life isn't short and don't want your death. I don't know. I think we're in our. I'm gonna be a ghost. <laughs> All energy is transferred, not created or destroyed. 
So where's my energy going? Back into the universe. That'd be my answer, but I suppose everyone's different. And Dogs Dogs is not going to die. She's going to be a ghost. She'd be... Dogs Dogs is going to be the most wholesome fucking ghost in the world as well. Just lesbian ghost floating about. Just wholesome as fuck. Friendly arguments online. He came out to see me at a picket in New Orleans. He brought me a Middle Eastern dessert from Jerusalem where he lives, and I brought him kosher chocolate and held a God hates Jews sign. Oh yeah, scare my enemies. <laughs> also, I think in all honesty, this woman is kind of brave for what she's doing. Because, you know, I wouldn't fucking do it. Don't know about you guys, but I would not put myself in the firing line like that. Especially, she's left it. She had the bollocks to leave it. And she just refused to stand by it. I think, I think hats, off, hot, hats off to her. That's all I can say. TBH, to be frank, we're not the energy with the generator. Nah, as a ghost, I'm gonna gaslight an alive person as a thinking they're insane. Oh no. Don't do that, please. Oh god. <laughs> Fuck's sakes. I'd pay to see that. Yep, you, you know what, me too. Once I saw that we were not the ultimate arbiters of divine truth, but flawed human Did she just say the arbiter? <laughs> someone get out on, someone get out on. Holy shit, the arbiter. I couldn't pretend otherwise. Hold on. Even better idea, move all of the furniture by an inch so they constantly bump into it all the time. I'm convinced someone's doing that in my flat. I'm convinced, because I'll come into my little office to do work, like today I come in to record, and everything seemed a tiny bit off, like my chair just went where I left it, my wall calendar is on the floor currently because it fell off the fucking, wind, fucking wall. I'm, I'm, I'm getting haunted, it's probably by fucking Hitler or someone. You can't say I mean. There is no I mean. But so many embrace me with open arms anyway. I wrote an apology for the harm I caused, but I also knew that an apology could never undo any of it. Well, there's the key message there. She understands that what she's done, there, there's no way of repairing that damage that she's done. A lifetime of standing on picket lines at funerals and vilifying Jews, gays, trans people, queers in general. There is no undoing of that, but she's making a solid effort at being a better person. And I suppose I'm not going to let make us watch the whole thing because 15 minutes and like we've still got a few things to cover in the stream. So we're going to leave it here and I just think good job is what I want to say. Um, I'm happy she managed to turn her life around and escape what is definitely seeming to me now like a fucking cult. But they're still here, the curious evolution of the Westboro Baptist Church. And as you can see here, that looks like a teenager. They are hiding their face. That just... God hates pride. No, he doesn't. I bet you 20 quid, if he's real, that God is a fucking queer. I'm convinced of it. Big up God. Man likes a bit of fruit and can eat blame him. Not a single congregation in America has the kind of recognition or notoriety that of the West Borough Baptist Church achieved in the 1990s. While still fiercely anti-homosexual, it's seen a subtle shift in its messages that inject ideas about Jesus and love, clarifies doctrine and even invokes positive language do you want to subscribe to our cause well where does it say that is it i'm so confused where does it say that does it say it on the screen or are you just being being angry god has to be a little bit free creating flamingos and gay penguins yeah that's true uh, I first met the Westboro Baptist Church in 2010, visiting Topeka, interviewing a dozen of the church's members. As a professor of comparative religion, I wanted to understand the ethics in which the community 
was so dedicated to a cause that offended so many personally, I wanted to know whether I could connect with them, since so many outsiders hate, mock or ostracise the church. Hello! Since Phelps' death in 2014, some speculated that the church would dissolve. Nearly all of the congregates at the time belonged to the extended Phelps family, including nine of his 13 children, their spouses, and their children. Jesus. Ostracised by other Christians, fair enough. They rarely dated or married outsiders. Young adults were more likely to leave than find spouses and settle down in the church. Fair enough. Look at him, the fucking knobhead. Oh my god, that... I completely glozed over that sign. No special laws for fags. <clears throat> it's the fucking first stream all over again, chat. The Westboro Baptist Church are an incredibly tight-knit community that have bounced back more than once from adversity like the 10 million judgment against them for defamation that was overturned by the US Supreme Court in 2011. They have weathered departures of numerous members, including many who grew up in the church and the death of their founder. Meanwhile, the church's visibility in the public eye has declined sharply of late. The news coverage of the church in 2018 has just been one-fourth of what it was during the same period in 2015. But the Westboro Baptist Church has not gone away, calling me surprised. The daily picketing campaigns continue in Kansas and across the country. Westboro Baptists remain active on social media with dozens of accounts on Twitter and Instagram taking note of trending phenomena like National Ice Cream Day only to denounce sinful behaviour. No, they ruined dogs. Homo. Shut up, opera. <laughs> Not too fond of gay people. <laughs> Schneider versus Phelps. Fred Phelps and his followers at the Westboro Baptist Church believe God punishes the United States for its tolerance of homosexuality, particularly within the military. To demonstrate the beliefs, Phelps and his followers often picked, often picket at military funerals. Albert Sider's son, Lance Corporal Matthew Snyder, was killed in the line of duty in Iraq in 2006. Westboro picketed Matthew Snyder's funeral, displaying signs that stated, for instance, God hates the USA, thank God for 9-11. Thank God dead for dead soldiers, and don't pray for the USA. The church notified local authorities in advance that they intended to picket the funeral, staged the picket on public land adjacent to, the, to a public street, and complied with all police instructions. Church members also sang hymns and recited Bible verses. Although Albert Schneider could see the tops of the picket signs on the day of the funeral, he could not read what was written on them. It's not only until he saw the news story about the funeral and the picketing, he became aware of the church's messages. Schneider sued Phelps and the church, claiming, amongst other things, that their action caused him severe emotional distress. In defense, Phelps argued that his speech, the picketing and the signs, were protected under the free speech clause of America. Jesus Christ. Supreme Court holding, even though some of the picket signs have been targeted, oh, targeted on the Schneider family, most of them addressed issues regarding the moral conduct of the US, the fate of the US, and homosexuality in the military, such as the overall thrust and domain theme of speech relative related to broad, broader pu pu public issues. Furthermore, the church was picketing on public land adjacent to a public street. Finally, there were no pre-existing relationships between Westboro's speech and Schneider that might suggest the speech on public matters were intended to mask an attack on Schneider over a private matter. Therefore, the court held that Phelps and his followers were speaking on matters of public concern on public property and thus were entitled to protection under the First Amendment. Literally, the lowest of the low. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The vote of 8 to 1 is particularly awful. Unfollowed by Megan Phelps Rowe. So yeah, the church and doc this is the another account from Megan, which we wa we watched at her video just then. So this is her another account. Megan and her ten siblings were told that their fate were already decided by God, and they were predestined to go to either heaven or hell and they wouldn't know until the day of judgement just what was in store for them. But although powerless to alter their destiny, the surest sign they could have they were on God's elect was their obedience. It's a cult, hands down. We 
had taken to the streets because we had a solemn duty to obey God and to plead with our neighbours to do the same, says Megan. It didn't matter that the world hated our message, whatever it would cost us, we would pay. See, that's awful to put a child through. Honestly. I may have to go to sleep soon as I have an exam that I'll definitely fail tomorrow. You've got this. I believe in you. You can do this. Everyone on the comments of the YouTube video, tell Bean that she's going to do grand. It wasn't just on the streets that Megan faced conflict, it was also at home. Megan's mother was a lynch linchpin of the Westboro community. She cared for the whole family, gave interviews to reporters, organised picket trips, and scheduled daycare and church cleanings. Her contributions were endless, but she was also unpredictable and ruthless. Megan came to dread the often nightmarish period between waking up and leaving for school. Her mum would swing between kindness and unjustified cruelty. One of them would always be at the end of their mother's razor tongue or three foot long dowel rod. As a teenager, Megan got her first inkling that something was wrong. The congregation began picketing at different events across the country, from gay pride marches to the streets at San Francisco. And they began to protest at funerals of soldiers killed in Iraq. God was showing his disdain, they argued, for killing soldiers in battle. In press releases announced in the press release announcing their protest at one military funeral, Megan's grandfather wrote, They turned the country over to fags. They're coming home in body bags. So child abuse there too, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, this is fucked up. But excruciatingly Singing military parodies in the face of grief-stricken families made Megan unwillingly and voluntarily like a terrible person. She would try and buttress herself with Bible verses just to find the behaviour, but a niggling doubt had crept in. Yeah. So we know this. She, she managed to escape. So, what have we learned about Westboro? We have learned that they are disgusting, that slowly but surely over many many years they're slowly beginning to change their message. They're also scumbags, they are child abusers, they are homophobic, they happily disrespect soldiers coming home from war. They do a lot of things that are just awful and they have no place in this world and I hope that they all get what they deserve. Now. To lighten the mood, let's watch a cat video. What is this Show song? Me someone that lives in your house rent free. Is he rent free? He doesn't pay rent. There are no thoughts behind his eyes. I believe now I've wasted enough of your time. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've got a better appreciation of queer folk. Because I may be a bit biased here. But queers are fucking awesome. This channel is ran by two queer motherfuckers. That's right. Both me and my editor are gay as fuck. And we are fucking cool. Thank you very much. In all seriousness though, this was a genuinely a massive undertaking. My editor will back me up on this one. This was a massive project. It took so much logistics. Just the Westboro Baptist Church thing. It was a nightmare of logistics and editing. But I'm glad I've done it. And I'm genuinely proud of this. I've listed the number of queer charities below for you to donate if you can. But if you can't, don't worry about it. I just can't thank you enough for watching. Thank you to Anon, Bean and Dogs Dogs for supporting me on coffee. You can also support me if you like. There's no pressure there. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Also subscribe!